Chuck Wagon MTG is sponsored by BC Comics and Games. Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us for another great deck tech here on Chuck Wagon MTG. Today we bring you Tish's Taking Turns. This is a standard blue-white deck that is somewhat similar to the other Taking Turns and the Bant Nexus decks out there, but it uses Omniscience to sneak out some very hefty creatures, namely Tishana. So let's take a look at the cards we want to have in our opening hand uh, to play right off the bat. So on turn one, we want to lay down a Pyramid of the Pantheon, an artifact for one generic mana. We can pay two, tap it, and then it can add one mana of any color to a mana pool, and then it gets a brick counter on it. And then once it has three brick counters, we can tap it to add three mana of any color to our mana pool. Uh, this is essentially the ramp that we're going to use to cast our bigger stuff earlier on in the game. So then on turn two, we're hopefully casting Treasure Map, an artifact for two generic mana that we can pay one, tap it, we get to scry one, and then we put a landmark counter on it. And then once we have three landmark counters on it, we get to create three colorless treasure tokens, and then we get to transform it into Treasure Cove, which is a land that produces either a colorless mana, or we can tap it and sacrifice a treasure, we get to draw a card. So essentially, we're going to use this to hopefully dig for land uh, in our early turns and then if we have the pyramid of pantheons out on turn one and this out on turn two by turn five we should be able to both have three counters on the pyramid and transform treasure map giving us six additional mana to use on the next turn and then this thing turns into a draw engine uh, later on in the game just in case we need to search for that last little piece to put everything together now another option we do have on turn two and turns thereafter, is we do have two copies of Seal Away, an enchantment for one generic and one white mana. The enchantment has Flash, and when it enters the battlefield, we get to exile a target tapped creature in opponent controls until Seal Away leaves the battlefield. This can be enough uh, to slow our opponents down, just to, you know, to buy us the time that we need to set up our board. Now, turns 3, 4, and 5, we're essentially going to just be uh, untapping our lands and passing turn uh, to, if nothing else, at least give the appearance that we have something we can do to interrupt our opponent's turn. Uh, worst case scenario, we're simply going to be activating the pyramid and the treasure map at the end of our opponent's turn, uh, but we do have one copy of Disallow, which is an instant for one generic and two blue mana that we get to counter target spell, activated ability, or triggered ability. Um, if you don't know how this card works, I highly suggest reading up on the rules on it, because this is an exceptionally diverse card, um, and can shut down a lot of uh, early game combos, a lot of any combos, matter of fact. Uh, this is an exceptionally good card, uh, one of my personal favorites in blue right now. Once we hit turn four, we do have, just in case they have an aggressive deck, uh, two copies of Settle the Wreckage, an instant for two generic and two white mana. Uh, it essentially exiles all attacking creatures, uh, player controls, uh, and then that player gets to search their library for that many basic lands for however many cards were exiled that way and they come into the battlefield tapped um, this can absolutely destroy aggro decks now another option we have at this point in the game is we have three copies of glimmer of genius an instant for three generic and one blue mana that lets us scry two and then we get to draw two cards and we get two energy uh, so that can come in handy just to dig for a little bit uh, more of what we need now, turn five is where this deck really opens up. Uh, not only do we have the option of both flipping our treasure map and getting our third counter on our pyramid uh, on turn five, but we also have the ability, if we want to, uh, we've got three copies of Gilded Lotus, an artifact for five generic mana that we can tap to add three mana of any one color to our mana pool, this is kind of further cements uh, our mana domination uh, thus far in the game. We also have one copy of Spell Swindle, which is an instant for three generic and two blue mana that counters target spell, and then we create X colorless 
treasure artifact tokens where X is the spells converted mana cost. Uh, this works very nicely in A, helping us get a little bit more mana to ramp up just in case we need it, but it also works very well with Treasure Cove uh, in feeding it more and more of the treasure tokens so we can just keep drawing more and more cards. So now we have this ridiculous ridiculous amount of mana what are we going to do with it well we have three copies of omniscience an enchantment for seven generic and three blue mana that's right 10 mana but it says we may cast spells from our hand without paying their mana costs this is where we just let the fun begin so the first spell we get to abuse the living daylights out of is four copies of Overflowing Insight that normally costs four generic and three blue, but we've got Omniscience, so it is cast absolutely free. Target player draws seven cards. Now, 99% of the time, we're going to cast this on us, uh, essentially just to feed our hands. I mean, we essentially get a new hand every time they cast this. There is, I believe I've done it once, where uh, your opponent is running low on cards, you're very late in the game, you can actually cast this on your opponent uh, to have them mill out, um, but that's going to be few and far between. And then we've also got four copies of Nexus of Fate, an instant for five generic and two blue mana. We get to take an extra turn after this one, and this is what makes this card absolutely nuts. If Nexus of Fate would be put into the graveyard from anywhere... Reveal it and then shuffle it back into its owner's library instead. Now, one of the great things about this, and one of the reasons a lot of these uh, taking turns uh, and these turbo fog decks work, is the fact that this does feed itself back into its deck once you cast it. So, as your uh, spells start to dwindle in your deck and your deck gets smaller and smaller, the likelihood of you drawing this card again is getting higher and higher and it is just, it is so fun to take turn after turn after turn. Uh, not fun for your opponent, but it's definitely fun for you. So here's where this deck just gets ridiculously fun. We have two copies of Tashana, Voice of Thunder. She's a legendary merfolk shaman for five generic, one green and one blue. Tashana's Voice of Thunder's power and toughness are each equal to the number of cards in your hand. You have no maximum hand size, and when Tashana enters the battlefield, draw a card for each creature you control. Now, we really don't have a lot of creatures in this deck, so chances are you're just going to be drawing one card. But if you can cast her for free off your Omniscience, and we've just cast, say, I don't know, Glimmer of Genius uh, or our Overflowing Insight, she gets big real, real quick. Because we have a lot of card drawn in this deck. This, combined with the Nexus of Fate that are just going to keep reappearing out of your deck, uh, you can literally win the game once she hits the battlefield because she's huge. Nexus of Fate, you take another turn, you swing. Nexus of Fate, take another turn, you swing. And each turn she's getting bigger as long as you're not playing cards. Uh, it's just, this is absolutely uh, probably one of the most satisfying wins I've had in a long time is when you get to beat down with Tashana here. Now, we do have a few other creatures in the deck. Uh, we have two copies of Time Stream Navigator, a 1-1 human pirate wizard for one generic and one blue mana that has a send. So essentially, if we have 10 more permanents on the battlefield, we get the city's blessing, which for us should not be a problem. Uh, and then she has the ability of pay two generic and two blue, tap her and then you put time stream navigator on the bottom of your library and then we get to take an extra turn after this one uh, this can only be activated if we have the city's blessing uh, but this works really nice um, if you happen to you know cast a uh, nexus of fate uh, it lets you essentially take just another turn so it's kind of a, a stand-in for a fourth and fifth nexus of fate as if they were needed but it, it's still fun to do 
And then we do have one copy of Torrential Gear Hulk, a 5 6 artifact creature construct for four generic and two blue mana that has flash. And then when it enters the battlefield, we get to cast an instant spell from our graveyard without paying its mana cost, and then that spell gets exiled. This is essentially a, a toolbox card. I think that's what this card was originally designed for, but this is essentially for late game. Um, we get to recast, disallow, uh, Glimmer of Genius, um, Settle the Wreckage, Spell Swindle. There's so much we can do with this. Um, nine times out of ten, it's going to be used to bring back a counter of some kind. Uh, but this guy can come in very handy, especially if they find some way to get rid of your Tishana. Uh, this guy could be the beater that's needed to come in for the last little bit of damage. For our mana base, we have four copies of Aether Hub. Uh, this is a land that comes in to the battlefield. You get an energy. You can tap it to add one colorless mana to your mana pool, or you can tap it and pay an energy to add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Uh, this is just a little extra mana fixing early on in the game. Um, later on in the game, it becomes pretty much irrelevant, but it's there for the beginning. That's its purpose. We also have one copy of Detection Tower, a land that can be tapped to add a colorless mana to our mana pool, or we can pay one, tap it, and then until end of turn, our opponents and creatures they control with Hexproof can be the targets of spells and abilities as though they didn't have Hexproof. Now, there's not a whole lot of decks out there that Hexproof is a kind of a big thing, but the few decks that it is a thing in, it's a big thing. Uh, so this card can actually come in very, very handy. And then we have four copies of Glacial Fortress. It's a land that comes into the battlefield tapped unless we control a plains or an island. And then it itself can be tapped for either white or blue mana. We then have nine copies of islands and then six copies of plains. For our sideboard, we've got three extra copies of Disallow, just in case we need a little more control. And then we have three copies of Essence Scatter, an instant for one generic and one blue mana that counters target creature spell. This is generally for those uh, aggro decks that want to beat us up real quick with lots of big creatures, uh, namely the Mono Green or one of the 900 different variations of red that is going around right now. And just in case we need just a little more control, we have two copies of Negate, an instant for a generic and a blue, that counters a target non-creature spell. We have two copies of River's Rebuke, a sorcery for four generic and two blue mana, return all non-land permanents target player controls to their owner's hand. Uh, this is essentially going to be for any aggro decks. Um, essentially, this can put the stuff back in their hand, Nine times out of ten, they're going to get us down pretty low in life, but this right here could be the one thing that slows them down just enough for us to be able to set up, get Omniscience on board, and then just kind of go off with casting whatever we want, whenever we want. Now, this next one is going to be a little odd. I'll be the first to admit that, but it is actually pretty dang good. We have one copy of Sandworm Convergence. It's an enchantment for six generic and two green mana, Creatures with flying can't attack you or planeswalk you control. At the beginning of your end step, create a 5-5 green worm creature token. Now, this works on a couple different levels. A, there are angel decks out there, they are real, and this completely shuts them down. Um, now, something else this does is that it creates a creature, a 5-5 body, every single turn. And with Omniscience, we can cast this without fear of you know, putting out something for eight mana and then not be able to protect it because by the time we get this out, we can probably have a counter to in hand waiting for us. Uh, this card is actually proven to be very good on several occasions. And one thing it works excellent against is if you happen to be playing against any of the black decks that are running the cards that can essentially pull your win cons out of your deck. Um, this is one that they will most definitely not expect. And lastly, just in case we need them, we have two more copies of Seal Away, and then we have two more copies of Settle the Wreckage. Uh, these are both essentially 
more for the aggro decks uh, that we're going to come across because those are honestly our biggest hurdle. The aggro decks, uh, you know, beating us down before we can set up our biggest problem. Anything mid to late game, we tend to stomp over, including Turbo Fog. In fact, this deck is uh, has a very solid record against Turbo Fog and other taking turn style decks. Well, that about wraps up our deck tech for Tish's taking turns. Uh, if you play this deck, be it a tournament or casual Friday Night Magic, or even at your kitchen table, we'd like to hear about it down in the comments below. Let us know what you thought. Let us know some things you might change or that you'd keep it perfect or that this deck is absolute trash and should probably be burned and never played again. And even if you didn't play it and you still have some of those thoughts, we'd love to hear those as well. So go ahead and please put those down in the comments below. I'd like to thank everyone for taking the time to share this wonderful deck tech with us. If you like what you saw here today, do us a huge favor. Click that like button, hit subscribe, be sure to hit that bell notification button so you can tell when we come out with new stuff, and then be sure to share this with your friends, your family, your loved ones, and your pets. Everyone could use a little more magic in their lives. Once again, thank you very much for watching, and as always, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch, Chuckwagon MTG. Now, if you could do us one last huge favor, check out this brief message about our sponsor. Chuckwagon MTG is sponsored by BC Comics and Games, now at one mega location to fill all of your gaming and comic needs. They have Magic the Gathering events every night of the week, as well as Warhammer, Pathfinder, Dungeons and Dragons Adventures League, Final Fantasy TCG, Pokemon, and Star Wars X-Wing events all throughout the week. They also have close to 100,000 comics on site. This is why I have personally made BC Comics and Games my home gaming store.